everybody this is a very interesting video we're shooting i was on my way to the next event at the un and i happened to meet mr simon steer who also is the executive secretary of the unfccc which is the united nations framework convention for climate change and we were like hey you know what let's carpool how are you doing sir i'm doing well i mean we've been here for a few days now i'm losing my voice been talking too much <laughs> but trying to get the message across in terms of what is needed right now in this critical stage in this fight against climate change. So a huge chunk of my audience is young and I feel very proud that the youth, especially in India, is very, very eager to work towards in this fight against climate change. So if you had to tell the youth a way that they could effectively be a part of this fight, what would it be? make your voices be heard. Climate activism is such an important part of ensuring that those in authority, those rule makers are held to account. And when we look at the youth engagement and within the process, I mean, my heart goes out to the thousands, the millions of young activists um, all around the world. And all I would ask is just continue to make your voices heard. We within the process will ensure that we will provide every opportunity um, to provide a platform um, for your voices. But what you're doing in your everyday lives, in your families, in your schools, universities, workplaces, in your communities, with your friends, just spread the word what the challenge that we all face as a global community, but what we as individuals can do, both in terms of taking climate action ourselves on a personal level, but also in terms of just spreading the word that we need to act so much faster and do so much more. This year at Climate Week, there's been a lot of conversations around hope and optimism with this uh, fight that we have against climate change. I want to ask you, is there a story that reinstates your hope in this fight? Because you've done so much work, even before climate action, you were in health and education. And sometimes it can get a little dense to see hope in situations like this, especially when you're so close to the data and the statistics and the reality of things. So has there been a story in your uh, fight so far that really inspires you to keep going? Yeah, just a few weeks ago, Hurricane Beryl decimated my home, my island, Karakou, um, off the mainland of Grenada. 98% of homes, buildings, property destroyed or damaged. And this is an island my parents live, my son was raised, my family live, my home decimated by a climate change related disaster and returning home in that devastation it was apocalyptic an island i know like the back of my hand you could not recognize i'm um, just seeing the devastation but the resilience of the people so many within my own community who came to me held me and just said simon we have hope we are going to build back better that determination we're not going to let this get us down. And when I saw those who had lost everything, everything, yet they still had hope that they would recover and build back. And not only build back, but build back better. Gives me strength and gives me hope. And what I experienced in my own home just a few weeks ago, other communities are experiencing that every single day of every single year. We lose track of the communities, vulnerable communities impacted by this climate catastrophe. But as I said, that, that resilience, but that hope, that hope will only last and can only be underpinned by the actions of those who hold responsibility, not only responsible for creating the crisis, but also responsible for providing the resources and taking the necessary actions to stem this crisis. So it's hope, but hope with a strong message that those that are responsible have a fundamental responsibility to address this. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's very, very inspiring. And thank you so much for everything that we're doing. And uh, thank you so much for spending this time with me. My pleasure. <laughs> and to all of your viewers, keep fighting, keep fighting and let your voices be heard. We need that. And us policymakers, those in governments 
need to hear your voices. Shout and shout loud. Thank you, Phil.